Are you interested in Halo Wars and the ships of the human fleet of Halo? Well, today we are going to conquer one of the more famous ships of the Halo universe, the UNSC Spirit of Fire. Join me aside as we print this model. Hello and welcome to today's video. As I said, we are looking at the Spirit of Fire from Halo Wars 1 and Halo Wars 2. The ship that just kept going despite the Covenant beating the tar out of it. And the fact that it spent 28 years out just floating in space while the war with the Halo and Covenant between the Covenant and the UNSC raged. Because they had to sacrifice their hyperdrive to stop the Covenant from getting so much good Forerunner technology. Well, today we are going to print a model of that ship that I am very impressed with. We're going to do this in the usual fashion. First, we're going to go find the model. Two, we're going to slice that model. Three, we're going to print that model. And four, take a deep look at the final product of, that, of this very well detailed model. I printed this using a CR10 from Creality. It is in three sections that will print it, but it has some very fine detail. And you guys can tell I've started actually painting on this one. It's just primer, but we're going to start really kind of stepping up the color details here very shortly. And if you guys want to see that, you got to join me on Tuesday night at 8.15 Central Standard Time for our streams. So we do all kinds of stuff, whether I'm upgrading a printer, painting a model, even putting a model together, and just moving forward as we do just normal stuff. And if you got questions about 3D printing, put them down in the comments down below or join us on that live stream. And if you're new here and you want to see more content like the Spirit of Fire, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join us as we are kind of always building kind of stuff. And if you want to help support the channel, consider joining my Patreon. So... Let's move forward, let's hop over, and let's get that file found so we can start printing this legendary ship. All right guys, so as you can see up on the screen, this is the model that we're using for today's build. This was a really good one because the model was really well done in the repaired states to be separated into three pieces and printed. So we get the most out of our detail with very few seam lines. Um, now, I used a CR10 to print mine. Not a very difficult print, but all credit to the model maker Azila Zero, uh, hopefully I said that right, um, for the model that we're using today. This model was just elegant. <coughs> um, I'm going to show you just some of the photos of what he posted up. Uh, there's a lot of great detail, a lot of clean lines, the engines and everything look fantastic. It's just a good build. And I like that they include the full files for the print as well as just the partials. Um, the partials, the fulls. Now, I did the Spirit of Fire B, Spirit of Fire C, and the Spirit of Fire A. Those are the three prints that I did to, to print mine. Now, could I do the whole ship? Yes, I could. But I'm going to lose detail somewhere, and I'm going to have a lot of lines that I don't want. So by doing this, I eliminated that problem. Because I get the full seam, I get rid of those, while I may have two seam lines in the model, where it's sitting on the build plate and stuff like that is actually hidden in there. So, it came out really, really well. And these files are on here. So, link for this will be down in the description as always, so you guys can go out and get the file and print it for yourself. But, the next thing we need to do is hop over to, over to Kira, and let's get this one sliced. Alright, so here we are at the computer. This is on a Windows machine. This is a Windows Cura 4.1.13, I think is what I'm at. The most recent version. And we're going to take our parts and we're going to throw them on the build plate. So we're going to do part A first. As you guys can see, it's big. <laughs> and this should fit easily on an Ender 3 or smaller part like an Odin um, without any issue. But look at that detail. Look at all this detail that is in here. I mean, it's gorgeous. Mine doesn't have the guns. Uh, they didn't come out for some reason. So I've stripped mine away. I'll do something different for mine. But there's a lot of good detail on here. Now, one thing I'm going to do, since it's a model, I'm going to go my support. I didn't do much for support, uh, but I am going to give it a little bit of infill top layers. Uh, I'm going to give it at least 10% infill. And then 
temperature I'm using Inland PLA Plus so my temperature is about 215 um, build plates around 50 for my area I'm in the Missouri area so um, and temperatures are kind of fluctuating wildly for us so it kind of makes it hard but 50 seems to work really well for the glass bed that I have on my CR10s and then just kind of looking at it the only area that I don't feel comfortable with support was right here so I want that to build up so we'll give it a little bit of a helping hand and honestly for the front part that's all she wrote so I would slice it and we'd move forward with that one but I'm actually going to clear clear my build plate let's go get part B take a look at it midsection of the ship and this is exactly how I printed it I did give some support to this section so we'll click on there I'm still on custom support so I did put a pillar there to help that build up this built just fine with the standard auto generated supports but I did put some additional supporting here and we have had one go off the charts here we gotta find that rogue support that's way over there that happens sometimes don't know why and delete it and the model will come back to normality so that is actually well no I did put a support here that's about all I did the auto generator supports the way this is cut works really well and I gotta give it to the model maker on this one the way he cut it or she okay the way they cut it into the three sections is really really good so it definitely is one of those good models and I'm actually gonna start Shintu box here and throw that guy into the background it's probably gonna come back up front but this middle section came up really well the guns come out really well and it worked it worked just awesome so I'm gonna get rid of that section for the moment I'm gonna bring in the engines this sections a bit larger but see how it lands on the build plate this one is not in the configuration that I printed it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rotate that because I want the detail of the engines and honestly, that front section, you're not even gonna see that connection point. So that's actually where I decided to print and it used a, used a little bit more support, but all in all, I got great detail and I, I kept this detail that's what I was after so a lot of times if I have a section that's going to be glued together I want those sections on the build plate that's my personal preference I think the models come out better and it just looks better so that's why I do that so if you're just kind of curious that is why I do that to these models um, is because I know that area is not going to be seen and as far as some supporting through here I will kind of pick on my corners pieces with some custom supports especially here in the front I'll just kind of make sure these outer corners are supported make sure like right there is supported because that's going to build up most of these other areas will build up just fine with the um, supports available from the system so honestly this model does not have a ton of work that you have to do to it the only thing missing from this kit is a stand that was the only thing that was really missing from this build and I have some generic stands that I use that work really well but you can see there's a hole here that's meant for a stand that uh, just isn't in the model makers kit so unfortunately that's not there but all in all this builds up really well um, I think I used maybe 400 grams total to make that big large ship so basically kind of keep it in mind yes it is three prints but it is way better than doing it with a large printer or trying to do the whole print and losing uh, losing your detail and I need to clear that and we're gonna have one more bit of fun we're gonna take the whole ship to resin land so Shintu box is how I do my resin prints it's how I prefer to do it so this is kind of a bonus you guys can see yeah it's not fitting there that's fine because we got to turn it and right now on my resin printers I'm on the photon mono X 
which is fine. Good large scale printer. One of the things I do when I resin print, I try to print at an angle and scatter it out. And I hate the scale, so we're gonna scale her up. I mean, that's a pretty good size print on the Photon Mono X. Now, of course, we can't print it like that because it's not gonna work, so you gotta do some supporting. So, as I said, I'm gonna try to start throwing in the Shintu box as well. Um, even if I'm printing it with FDM, I wanna make sure your resin folks are covered too. So, I'll hop over here. You guys can see it's laid down the platform. I'll platform all heavy supports because it is going to be a heavier model. And the way that we're printing it is going to be pretty heavy. So I'm not exactly happy with that. So I'm actually going to come back. I'm going to grab the model with rotation. And I actually want to, and it's going to yell at me. I want to lay it back down. And I know it doesn't fit, but I'm laying it back down for a reason right now. And I'm going to tilt her sideways like this. Well, not that far. I'm going to 45, I'm going to give her a slight angle there. And then I'm going to go back up this angle. Well, if, yeah, if the program would let me. Okay, there we go. So I'm changing the orientation a little bit. Then we're going to hop back over here to supports. I want to see how it attaches because I don't want too many connection points. And that last way kind of looked like there was too much support points. Now to me, this looks better, a lot easier to take supports off, and a lot less places it's actually going to damage detail. So what I would do next is hop back over here, make sure everything looks okay. I'm not too worried about a support piece being off and I would slice it. And for you Photon Mono users, there's my preferred settings that work really well for me. Now keyword, for me. I'm using any cubic standard or basic resin and it works really well with these settings for my printer. Not all printers are created equal, so keep that in mind, but this is just kind of a bonus piece. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to hop over to that CR10. We're going to see this model printed. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll see you on the other side after the final product. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, the making of this ship, as we continue to hopefully maybe even see the ship appear in Halo Infinite. Since we saw Atriox, maybe we'll see these guys turn up. So from an old colony ship to a front running, let's save the galaxy refitted warship for the cup for the UNSC. It's definitely one of those ships out there that is awesome environment and a great build. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Catch me over on the live streams if you want to see more progress on this one. And we will see you guys in the next video.